Hello everyone, this is Defense Politics Asia and this is the summary for the day of 938 for 18th of September. Don't worry, this is not blood. This is just water. You know why? Because when I drink water, I realize my mouth have a hole. So the water came out. So, so yeah, this is not blood. Don't worry. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no that's, it's not blood. Um, and okay, let's let uh, there is one frontline changes report since the frontline changes report that is already published on the DPA main channel. Uh, it's over at Vimca, and uh, this is actually pretty significant because we don't really have much frontline changes uh, in this region for some time. And this time around, we have a geolocation of Russian. Oh, that's so tiny, it's not gonna feel good. Um, the yeah, there's frontline changes. Uh, there's Russian forces geolocated over here, attacked by Ukrainian drone. And this confirmed Russian advance around the Vimka region as the Russian forces move up this area. If I zoom out, you probably can see the strategic picture a bit better. Um, so this is Vimka and the Russian forces at, has advanced slightly over in this area here. We have to do we have to note that the Russian Defense Ministry on the 1st of September declared that they have captured Vimka. So, but ultimately this is a drone strike. So no, this is not entirely evidence to invalidate the Russian Defense Ministry's claim. So anyway, these are only frontline changes uh, up to this point as per recording since the frontline changes report. This is not blood, really, really. I'm, I'm, I didn't bleed. Uh, it's not the time of the month yet. Uh, so we go into the uh, Kursk front. So at the Kursk front, uh, we, the Ukrainian counter counter offensive is still ongoing while the Russian counter offensive is ongoing as well. Over in the Klushkovo sector, the Ukrainian forces continue to clash into the uh, Veseloy as well as uh, Medvedje region. As, as they tr continue to try to push through these two regions as the Russian forces continue to hold back them uh, pretty successfully, I would say. Uh, the Ukrainians still have not managed to really change the situation at all. Two geo location of Ukrainian forces uh, in just south of Abukovka didn't really exactly change anything. At Noviput, Russian forces counter attack at Noviput, um, and then there is shelling reported at Katerinivka, Obodi, Apalivka, Novo Ivanivka, and which means that uh, the rear positions continue to be hit by Russian airstrikes and artillery. Uh, further south, uh, further away, there's also strikes over in uh, Stepne, Rishki, Kindratevka, and Kotin. So these are all even further reserve positions. It's interesting that Stepne and Kindratevka got hit. I wonder if the Ukrainians may try a new direction uh, to try to relieve the situation over in the current uh, Grushkovo sector, where they are still struggling to break through. So I, I I mean why not no, um yeah why not so but whatever it is so the current problem is that the Ukrainians are not being very flexible and this is very unlike the initial part of the curse offensive where they just break through all the countryside they are now stuck in position and that is actually a very 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 bad way of fighting but whatever it is it is what it is so uh, before you go to the western flank there is also shelling reported over in this uh, Glushkiv region continuing south of Glushkiv there is a lot of shelling over in uh, Shalkine uh, this is uh, Malushchini Rujevi and uh, Mazivka and Klushkiv. So this area continue to get shelled, continue to make me suspect there might be Ukrainian forces gathering in this area here. So we move on to, to the western flank. At the western flank of the uh, Kursk front, the Russian forces continue their counter-offensive and uh, the, they are attacking towards Lyubiv, Lyub, uh, Lyubimovka, Kotilok, Kos, uh, sorry, sorry, it's not Kotilok, Tol, Tolstilok. Uh, Obukovka, Darino, Nikolaevo, Darino. And the Ukrainian forces are counter-attacking at Obukovka and Lyubimovka. Russian forces are geolocated uh, to be uh, operating southeast of Kerenevo, capturing some grounds, uh, confirming Russian presence around this area here. Shelling reported at Novo Ivanovka and uh, Svetiklovo. So, and as well as Krulenkoe, there is also a shelling reported over there. So the rest of the actions around here is part of the northern flank, which I'm going to talk about next. But the Russian continue to make the push. The progress is rather slow uh, as compared to the initial start of the offensive. Uh, so it is slow, but uh, it is expected. 
but it is not too bad. But it is quite bad. <laughs> we shall see how this goes. We shall see how this goes. Whether the Russians would be able to push it, uh, push the Ukrainians out. Uh, Ukrainians definitely is uh having a lot more forces than expected in the Kursk region. So they are definitely holding their own. Over in the northern flank, uh, over in the northern flank, the Russian forces, of course, other than the reports of the fighting southwest of uh, the southeast of Karinevo, Lubimovka, Kustilok, Ukrainian force counterattack, there's uh, Charlie reported at uh, these two position. Russian forces are attacking uh, Olivka, Novo Shirokina, uh, as well as Malaloknia. Malaya Luknia. Ukrainian forces are counter attacking in Malaya Luknia as well. Or rather, they are they are attacking. The Russians are defending. Not sure which way. Ukrainians are also attacking Ogolovka. So the this and uh, Russian forces are attacking at uh, Ruskoy uh, Rus, uh, Ruskoy Parashnoye. There is front line changes over in this sector or uh, in the Ruskoy Parashnoye region up down to Cherkaskoy Parashnoye. I'll talk about it later. So the current situation remains like this. The entire grey zone, this area here, continues to be you know continues to be a dragon so uh this dragon continues to be non-existent because there's no dragon in this world unless you're talking about komodo dragon which this is totally not what it is but there's nothing of really actually happening around this claimed region so um we move into the uh the eastern flank so at this area here of course the malaya loknia thingy already mentioned this there's Charlie also reported Yuzhny, Merny, Russian forces attacking in Matanovka uh, in the fire attack, Rusko, uh, Rusko Frontline changes over this area here. If we zoom in, we'll probably see better. Uh, so these are all Russian airstrikes that hit Ukrainian positions. And uh, these various positions confirm Ukrainian presence, which means that the Ukrainians actually managed to make some progress around in the Ruskoye Parashnoye region as well as over in the Cherkaskoye Parashnoye region. Very slight change. Uh, strategically, there is not much changes per se because uh, they are basically still more or less at the same place. So uh, we shall continue to monitor. The front line is very static, generally speaking. We shall continue to monitor. Over in the southern flank, uh, Russian forces are continuing the attack from Boroki towards Plakovo. They are very firmly you know, propagating that they have Borki. And the uh, Ukrainian forces are counter-attacking towards Borki as well. R Russian forces shelling Krylovka Kril and Guevo. So that's the current situation over in the southern flank of the uh, Kursk front. So, and uh, further away, we have shelling reported as Sumi as well as uh, Mokritsia. Yeah, so Mokritsia. So, that's it from the Kurs front. So that's it for the Kurs front. We move into the Kharkiv front. The Kharkiv front. In the Kharkiv front, uh, we have fighting reported uh, mainly over in the Voschan sector. Fighting is reported at Voschan as well as Taike, according to the Ukrainian Defense Ministry. Russian Defense Ministry did mention that they are engaging um, the 57th Motorized Infantry Brigade 36 Marine, 5th Border Security uh, Detachment, which is like whatever it is, doesn't matter, they are just Ukrainian troops. Um, like uh, To me, it makes no difference, you know. Uh, so, moving on, uh, because we are not covering the war so granularly, granularly so um, like you, you can't see them operating and fighting you know, in details. So, which is why it's not important to me. Um, but of course, to for people who want to cover the very tactical situation, you know, talk about the nuances, the stories, the individuals clearly the units are important but not to me so over the kupians front at the kupians front uh that we still have the usual fighting report at sinkivka and petropolivka so there's no strategic change around here over in the pischane front so at the pischane front uh we have fighting reported uh in the north of Pischane, in the region of Pischane, basically the same thing fighting reported towards kruskivka and kruliakivka um this there's a slight front line change over in the north of Pischane, very small issue. I talked about in the front line changes report, so I won't rehash. Fighting reported at Stemakivka. So that's about it. Uh we move further south from Pischane front into the Svetovay front. At the Svetovay front, we have fighting reported at Juz uh Zerelion. I suddenly I can't pronounce this word. Z uh Zerani. Yeah, it's a real name. And uh, there is fighting reporter at uh, Chenishkina, Juzelibivka, and Makievka. So 
that's all from this area here. Uh, south of Mekievka, there are some slight front line changes. Russian forces geolocated, moving south, uh, continue to try to capture the rest of Mekievka. Of course, there is also the opposite bank, I think, is already under fire control. The Ukrainians are probably not there. They may be in the forest. But yeah, so that's the current situation over in the Mekievka region. It's not a lot of grounds, but let's see how this develop. Uh, over in the Kremlin front, uh, we have fighting reported over in Nevsky, Novosadove. Bilhorivka is mentioned again. I'm not sure if this this one or this one. And fighting reported in the Serebransky forest tree. The problem with the Bilhorivka situation is that they mentioned this as part of the Liman direction. The Bilhorivka is largely always tends to be known as part of the Sivas direction. So I have no idea. Uh, over at the Sivers front, uh, fighting is reported at Vukomokanyamske, Sivers, uh, Ivano Darivka, and of course the frontline changes reported at Vimka, so as mentioned in the beginning of this report. So uh, we continue to have this uh, very you know, uncomfortable situation where we the, the reporting doesn't fit with the mapping and it's just weird. No, it's just weird. Over in the Bakhmut front, in the northern flank of the Bakhmut front, um, we have fighting reported towards Minkivka, Krakowivka, Kalinina, and Chasifia. So it's interesting that we have fighting reported at Minkivka, but based on past experience, most likely this is just going to be a one off. I don't think we're going to see an uh, extension. If there is a, if this continues to last for a few days, then of course this might actually be an offensive, but tentatively it doesn't feel like it. But what is offensive is actually in the South Bakhmut region, where the Russian forces continue to attack towards Tuposhki, Petashne, Bilhora, Dilevka, and fighting reporter at Kudyumivka. And of, this is the part where it's really intriguing because the front line might actually be a lot more advanced than it is shown on these maps. And I'm talking about maps. The, until today, there's still people talking, talking nonsense in the comments. Reminder, there's two maps on this DPA map. DPA map is a special map different from any other map we have two different maps we have the ukrainian map and the russian map the blue is the ukrainian map the pink is the russian map there's two maps so stop talking about no oh i only listen to the pro-ukrainian information or the pro-russian information i map both sides i make the changes if it's just a claim i only change one side mapping the other side will not change so that's why there is overlapping mappings oh my freaking god so anyway, yeah, this is why you don't watch every day. This this is what happens. You no, know? you become you no. Know... Hey, my bleeding is gone. You see, I cast the 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 magic of healing. You see, this is why you know, you need to learn magic. Uh, okay, okay. Over the New York front, fighting reporter at Dajne, Tos Torex. No one I'm feeling better now. No, uh, over at Zalizne, Skabinivka, Nelipivka, New York. And Alessandro Pio. So, uh, and then there's also shelling reported over in Petrovka, according to the Russian Defense Ministry. So, this is pretty intensive. A lot of action seemingly over in this uh, sector of the New York front. And uh, and this, and there's one interesting note is that Skibinivka, fighting at Skibinivka, is actually mentioned by the Ukrainian Defense Ministry as well. So, that puts into question how? How? How where where the Russians are. So let me show you. So assuming that this is uh Shibanevka, where would and then there is also fighting reporter, of course, in uh, Nelipivka. So Russians are probably attacking here, which makes perfect sense. They are just there. And Ukrainians uh, supposedly have thorax. How do you reach Shibanevka? Did the Russians make some advancement around here? Or did the Russians actually advance and take south of Torex and uh, allow them to attack into Skibinivka? What the hell is happening? I have no idea. So, so you no, know, yeah, this is the you no know, the, the 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 interesting situation that's happening in uh, the nowadays where there's a lot of fog of war, so much fog, fog you man, and uh, so that's it from the New York front. We move into the northern flank of the Pokrov front. The Russian forces attacking in Novo Olesendrivka. Sorry, I was just checking you know, if the recording is moving. I was like, oh fuck. 
imagine I recorded for 15 minutes and <gasps> it's not recorded. And then fighting reporter was Devizenka, Novo, Novo Toreski, and Mario Libivka. So this is the current Northern flank. As usual, as I mentioned, always this is just a pinning operation. Nothing, nothing will happen around here. Over in the Khorodivka, Novo Khorodivka region, uh, Russian forces attacking at Khorodivka, Krasnia, Novo Khorodivka, and Marinivka. So this, the front line here, uh, didn't really change much at this moment. So a uh, very uh, Ukrainians are putting a very strong defense. Russian forces, of course, secured most of Khorodivka already. There's major trench line according to the trench mapping by someone else. It's not by me. So uh, we shall continue to monitor and see how this goes. I, uh, of course, I have to put some disclaimer. I have no freaking idea if all these trench markings are accurate or not. So it's just important to note. Just take this with a pinch of salt. It's important to note with a pinch of salt. So uh, over in the in the Ukraine's and uh, Selidove region, Russian forces attacking at Selidove, Ukraine's as well as uh, towards Sukurine. Russian forces making some advance northwest of Ukraine. So um, so marking a uh, Russian flanking northward of uh, Sukurine. So we will continue to monitor and see how this develops. So moving on to away from uh, this region here, uh, of course, I'm uh, not exactly sure though this flanking can, what they could plan to do. Are they going to go south? Um, go south or you not know, going to northward? Let's see. And uh, over in the south of this position, in the Khrenik region, there's only fighting reported in the Zelani Pershi region. So only in this part, there was report of fighting. So that's it from the Khrenik region. This sailing here surprisingly still survived. They just have to prove me wrong. So I'm wrong. Okay. So moving on over in the uh, uh the this uh Maximilianivka region, Hostre region, there's still no more news about Hostre, Russian force attack fighting in the Georgivka region. And uh there's Shaling reporter at Krakow. And then there is interesting information about fighting towards uh Downey. So uh so this is according to the Ukrainian Defense Ministry. That means the Russians are now making this push in this direction. Maybe there is already some frontline changes that we have we are not aware of that is hidden by the fog of war. So fog them again. And uh, so this is uh, very foggy. So we shall see how this develop. Uh, interesting the mention of uh, Doutne or Doutneji. <laughs> Why did they have to add a J in the spelling? It don't make sense. So over in the Konstantinivka Voleda region, uh, so there is fighting reporter at Konstantinivka towards Katerinivka, towards Yelizavetivka. Uh, frontline changes in the Vodian region confirming Russians continue to consolidate their position in Vo uh, Vodiane region. Fighting reporter at Vodiane towards Bohovyevhelenka and at Voleda. So uh, the Bohoyevlenka is now mentioned by the Ukrainian Defense Ministry as well. Yelizavetevka uh, uh, is only mentioned by the Russian Defense Ministry. Katerinevka is mentioned by the Ukrainian Defense Ministry. So def definitely, tactically, quietly, the Ukrainians are admitting the Russians are making advances in this region here. This time around, they are mentioned. They they have acknowledged Katerinevka uh, is under threat. Uh, they are accepting that Bohoyevlenka is under threat. So the fighting is definitely now moving onwards. So this is why we have to monitor the defense ministry's reportings because they will quietly admit to this kind of frontline change as they start to name towns and settlements that was never mentioned before, uh, which is probably not even near the front line because this is signals that the fighting have actually moved. The, there is important thing to note is that a lot of people do not trust th this government uh, ministry's reports. But the thing is that the reports are not just read by us. It's also read by the soldiers. So if the soldiers find that their suffering is not being reported, yeah, that may cause resentment. So, um, so and they also have the wrong perception and appreciation of the situation, the strategic situation on the ground. So uh, it's actually bad for uh, mission. So um, so you know, don't don't always assume that the the ministries are making fake reports. 
Sometimes they just have bad reports coming from the ground because there's always corrupted people that may want to put up fake information just to get more bonuses, get more get medals, or to cover up their failures. That is also possible. So which is also why casualty numbers are all bullshit because um you know they, they say that they kill how many of the enemy units, equipment. A lot of the times all these are inflated because they think that they killed that person, but the person maybe did not die. So this is just important to note. And um, so we move on. Over in the Velika Nova Circle sector, we have fighting reporter at Zolotaneva as well as towards Shataske, which is over here. So the Russian forces are starting to move, move in these directions. So far, no frontline changes are being reported yet. So no, everything is so foggy, so foggy. Fog, man, fog, foggy. So we move into the Zaporizhia front. So this is Zaporizhia city and uh, this is the Zaporizhia front. At the Zaporizhia front, uh, the, this time around the actions is in Huyapole and Orekiv sector. This Orekiv sector, this Huyapole sector, Huyapole, Orekiv. Russian forces fighting in the region of Mafopil towards uh, Huyapole, below here, yeah? Malatomashka and towards Novo Danilivka. So yeah, things are starting to move somewhat, but we shall see how this goes. The frontline changes mainly is over at Mafopil, where they secured the Dachas north of Mafopil, which is over here. So, but that's about it. Whether the Russians will actually go for you no know, Koyapole for real, any anyone's guess. So, so that's it from the Zaporizhia front, and finally we go to the Kherson front. Where the front where nobody give a damn about. We're fighting reported again towards pre Dniproski direction. Fight shelling reported at Tokarivka, Lvove, as well as um, Komishani. So, and now uh, that's about it for the Kherson front. And that's it. Uh, of, uh, definitely, I'm going to see comments going to ask, Oh, you never talk about the big explosion in Tver. There's a big explosion in Tver. That's it. Yeah, what do you want? The, the Russians say it's drones, the Ukrainians say it's drones, maybe it's missiles, who knows. And I'll see you guys in the next update.